Many times when dialysis is prescribed for us as a course of treatment, we are nervous, we're afraid, and a lot of times we as patients go into a, a state of depression. I was pretty worried at first. Um, you know, when, when you find out something's wrong with you, you're like, okay, I'm gonna have to change my life, I'm gonna have to do all these things to, to uh, control it and get better. For me, after uh, the doctor said to me that I had to go on dialysis, I made a decision. And I made the decision based on the fact that I wanted to live. You know, this ain't the end of the world. You know, you need to stay on your schedule and, you know, just make tomorrow, think positive, make tomorrow a better day. Just live life. Don't crawl in a hole and die. Just live life. Watch your diet, watch your fluids, and talk to your team. As a dialysis patient, you have your own personal health care team. The team includes a physician, a nurse, a dietitian, and a social worker. But while each of these plays an important role, the most important member of the team is you. In this video, we'll look at how you can become the leader of your health care team. To be the leader of your healthcare team, you must be involved. You should meet with each of your healthcare providers, ask questions about your treatment and about the policies of the facility where you receive care. If you need more information about your treatment options, the disease process, your medicines, your diet, or anything else, speak up, ask questions, and be sure you get the information you need. So do you have any questions or concerns? Well, you know, of course, I got this catheter in my chest, and. You know, my fistula's not ready yet, but what I really want is to take a shower. Can I do that? You know you have to keep your catheter clean and dry in order to prevent infection, but pretty soon we'll be able to take it out. Okay. Well, oh, I do have one other question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been coming here three afternoons a week and everything, but I wish there was some way I could get my treatments without missing so much work. Well, I can use some information on home therapy. You know, depending on your situation, there might be some options there. That'd be great. Thanks. You're welcome. That's a good example of a patient getting involved, asking questions, learning more about his treatment. But what about this? I need to talk with you about these lab results. We're concerned about the numbers. Save it. I don't want to talk about that stuff right now. But it's important that we figure Did out. you hear me? I said I don't want to talk about it. It's bad enough I gotta be here three times a week. Why can't you give me a break and let me watch TV or take a nap? Just leave me alone. This patient is not getting involved. The nurse is trying to help, but the patient won't cooperate. To be the leader of your own team, you must work with the other team members. Get the information you need. Be involved. For me, what worked best is to go to the people that were the professionals that knew everything and ask them, hey, what do I need to do today? Once we understand why uh, a course of treatment, once we understand our medications, we tend to follow orders better, and we tend to, to do better. Good communication is essential. You need to understand the information your healthcare team is giving you and they need to understand your questions, opinions, and concerns. Everything looks great. We'll see you next time. Hey, Doc, I forgot to tell you something. I passed out yesterday, and I hit my head, too. What's up with that? This is not effective communication. Communication should be face-to-face, -face, private, between just you and the members of your team. Everything looks great. We'll see you next time. Hey, I forgot to ask the doctor something. Would you please tell her to come back when she's done over there? Oh, sure, no problem. Now that's more like it. Did you have another question? Doctor, I passed out yesterday, and I hit my head. That's never happened before. Well, it could be because... And why is my blood pressure so high? I saw on TV where a diabetic got his leg amputated. Is that going to happen to me? I really hate that. 
Can I eat tomatoes? What about corn? Can I eat corn? I do like corn. Stop. That's too many questions too fast. Try to focus on one thing at a time. This will help the staff member understand and give you better answers. Remember, one question at a time. Always be direct and get to the point. Here's one more tip about communication. What's causing these headaches? They get really bad. When do you get these headaches? Oh, all the time. I mean, do you get them right after you eat? Do you get them first thing in the morning? Just all the time. You mean to tell me there's never a time when you don't have a headache? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. But the patient did say that. So did she really mean all the time? Probably not. Try to say exactly what you mean. Be precise. Don't exaggerate. And avoid words like always or never if you don't really mean always or never. Sometimes you may be upset even angry about your disease or your treatment. Okay. But you must behave responsibly. So how's your treatment going? It sucks. I hate it. I hate coming to this place. A lot of people have a hard time when they first start dialysis. But if you're interested, I could you talk... You don't understand, Jack. How could you understand? You ain't tied to that machine for three hours. No, I'm not. But I have learned a lot about what you're dealing with. Forget it. I don't need this. Never communicate like this. No matter how you feel, you must speak respectfully. Avoid sarcastic or mean remarks. Never use profanity. That means no cussing at the treatment center, ever. That kind of behavior will not help your treatment. But this kind of behavior will. So how's your treatment going? It's really hard. Sometimes I just can't stand being in that chair. At all times, even if you are upset, do your best to communicate effectively. When you do, you're helping your care team give you the very best care possible. I understand. A lot of patients feel that way when they first start dialysis, but it will get better. If you have questions, don't be afraid to ask, because the, the more you don't ask, the more scared you get. When patients learn more, uh, uh, when they get more knowledgeable about what's actually going on with them, and the process uh, with the machine and how everything works, they, they, they tend to do really well. Your clinic has rules that must be followed. Most patients follow the rules. Even when some patients don't, an explanation from a staff member usually takes care of the problem. But in some extreme cases, breaking the rules may cause a patient to be discharged. This means the patient is not allowed to return to the facility. If you have questions about the rules at your treatment facility, be sure to ask your health care team. Look, I'm telling you right now, quit talking to me. Who the f do you think you are? But I was only asking. Hey, just stop talking, OK? I know where you live. Did you know that? This patient just crossed the line in a big way. He threatened the safety of a staff member. Threatening remarks like this will never be tolerated and could cause this patient to be permanently discharged from the facility. And even if a specific staff member is not threatened. Sometimes I wish somebody would just take a bomb and blow this place up. Indirect threats like this can also be grounds for discharge. Payment for services is always the patient's responsibility whether paying directly or receiving assistance. I can't believe this bill. How am I supposed to pay this? I checked on that for you. Medicare stopped paying for your treatments because you stopped paying your Medicare premium. Man, no premium's too high. Size, y'all can't keep me out of here because of this. I know my rights. The patient does have rights, but he also has responsibilities, like keeping up with his Medicare payments. I'm glad you came to see me today because if you had let this go any longer or gotten any farther behind... You mean they wouldn't let me get treatment here? You really need to get this straightened out right away. Uh, let's look and see what we can do, okay? Okay. Dialysis facilities must be paid for their services. If Medicare pays for your care, you must pay your Medicare premiums. If your treatment is paid by an insurance company that sends checks directly to you, you must use these funds to pay for your care. 
whether through Medicare, private insurance, or personal funds, your dialysis treatment must be paid for. So I can get help paying for treatment, some kind of assistance. Yes, you can, but it's up to you to apply for the assistance, to provide the proper documentation, and to get the paperwork done. You really have to do your part. Oh, man, filling out those forms can be such a pain. But I guess if it helps me get my treatment. Right. It really is worth the effort. Weapons are not allowed in any treatment facility. This is a rule that should never, ever be broken. Bringing a gun, knife, or other weapon to a treatment facility is strictly prohibited and may lead to immediate discharge. Even if you don't threaten anyone, simply having the weapon at the clinic is a serious violation. Talk to your health care team if you have any questions about what you can bring with you. Sometimes when you have patients that uh, are disruptive, um, it irritates the other patients. There was um, one young man who would come in every time and, and he would, you know, talk with foul language. He hated being on the, you know, on the treatment and he would get off before it was time and um, he would leave and I saw the effect on the staff you know, as well as the other patients, you know, when someone does come in that way. I enjoy being positive about it. I can't imagine being, you know, super negative about the whole experience and being sad and being down. Uh, the, uh, the best way I feel like to face it is to surround yourself with the people that are there to have fun with it and to face the challenges and, you know, to get better, you know. So you've learned about being part of your own health care team and asking questions when you need information or help. But you may need help in other areas too. I'm just under so much pressure right now. I don't know how I'm going to manage. I don't know. Your health care team knows you're a person, not just a patient. If you need to talk about family problems, money problems, or anything else, your social worker will be there for you. And if you don't get all the answers you need at the treatment facility, you could call on the network for help too. A lot of times people are reluctant to talk about things that go on in their life outside of the dialysis unit, but that too can impact your health, how well you do, and how will you continue to do? Remember, be involved, communicate effectively, follow the rules, and ask questions when you need information or help. Talk with your doctors. Ask them all the questions that you need to ask. For me, I asked everything I got online. I learned everything I, um, I read. I got all brochures, magazines. I, I made the choice that I had to take care of of my health. The doctor could only do so much and it was going to be ultimately, it was going to be up to me whether I live or die. I have always taken care of myself. My life is very important to me and um, my life counts. I'm taking care of myself because I count. I count. I count. I count.